After retaking Whiteholm Castle, Roland assumes the throne. Joy over the return of the line of Glenbrook sweeps the kingdom. Yet not everyone is quick to welcome Roland back with open arms. Life under as frosty rule treated them well, and they suspect him to be naught but a figurehead of a puppet regime. Roland's absence, it seems, made room for discord among his subjects to flourish. There you are, Your Majesty. Ah, Huet. Pray, do not sound so dismal. Now that we have retaken Whiteholm Castle, you are Glenbrook's rightful king. We've an entire kingdom to rebuild out of the ruins of war. Patriot and the others have been demanding utmost haste. I understand that, I do. Oh, Cordelia. Damn the duchy. They tried to take everything from me. They have to pay. I know you have suffered many hardships, but pray do not let yourself succumb to despair. Me, our comrades, your people, all of us are eagerly awaiting the era of peace our new king will bring. King, eh? My father never once let his emotions overcome him. Not even the day my mother died. I had every intention of following his stoic example, but... Majesty... I bring word from the infirmary. Is it Cordelia? Pray tell me she's all right. She is indeed recovering a pace, Your Majesty. Oh, thank the stars. It seems she has something to discuss with you all, if you will hear her out. Of course. Tell her we'll speak in the garden. But only if it will not tax her over much. Yes, sire. Huet, fetch Saranoa and the rest. Tell them to come to the garden as soon as they are able. Twould be my pleasure. What is it? You're smiling. Uh, it's only... I thought it would be some time yet before I saw you look so at ease. I'll return shortly with the others. Cordelia, you've returned to me after so long. But slow and steady is the path to recovery. Yes, there is no rush. So that is what happened in my absence. Yes. Gustadolf was a clever ruler. After the invasion, Patriot and his royalists cozied up to Espros in order to protect themselves. Gustadolf used them to his every advantage. He stripped them of their privileges and left them nothing but their governing responsibilities. I don't think Patriot much cared for that. But it did ensure everything continued smoothly, without interrupting the people's lives. Now I understand why there was little unrest after the occupation began. A clean, effective takeover by a well-seasoned commander. But all the while, he was preparing to face the next conflict. Wait. Does he intend to march on Heisen? I believe so. I wish I could be more specific. But the god- He said it will all be over once the death snell is ready. What is this death snell? A new weapon born from the coupling of his frosty ironworking and explosive projectiles. Phallus claimed it is powerful enough to break through the goddess's shield. To think Esfrost is capable of creating such a monstrosity. Ah, so much for their reign of peace. Taking over Glenbrook was only the first move in a bigger gambit to seize the source. I am disturbed to learn of Gustadolf's plan. But rebuilding our capital must take priority. Very well. We should investigate the extent of the damage and discuss how best to proceed from there. House Wolfort will lend whatever aid you need. 
Thank you, Sarah Noah. But since you are one of their saintly seven now, I'd ask you to keep an eye on Hyzant as well. Cordelia? Apologies. A brief spell of dizziness. I have been looking everywhere for you, Your Highness. A patriot. I do not recall giving you leave of the infirmary. Your injuries are still healing. Would you undo all the trouble I went through to get you the best of care? Pray return to the infirmary at once. It wouldn't do to push yourself, Cordelia. Rest now. Leave everything to me. All right. We got a pretty good understanding of the damage in the capital, my lord. It's... Uh, a tad more than we were expecting. I see. Then we must make haste with repairs. Let's report this to High's aunt and see what aid they can give us. Was there anything of note besides damage? There ain't an easy way of putting this, but not everyone's exactly pleased to hear Prince Roland's returned. S. Frost exempted Glenbrook's subjects from the salt tax, likely a bid to get in everyone's good graces. And a damn good one at that. But more than that, the so-called freedom Gustadolf brought to the kingdom seems to have made a splash. He threw out the old ways and made it so anyone could better their lot in life depending on their ability instead of their birthright. Just as in Esfrost. Then the people must have looked quite favorably upon Gustadolf's rule. I wager folks ain't too pleased to see us since they figure it means things will go back to how they used to be. Uh, Roland surmised as much. We must do something to show the people his is a return worth celebrating. Anna, have you looked into the state of affairs in the castle? Yes. The head of the Royalists, Minister Patriot, is extending his influence. He made quite the name for himself, even under Gustadolf. Though he seems eager enough to support King Roland, he was just as eager to serve the Archduke. I do not believe we can trust him. Distinguished members of House Wolfford, how hard you are all working to rebuild our capital. What a delightful thing to see. Minister, you do us a great honor visiting us out of all the many other responsibilities that must vie for your attention. Oh, come now, do not think yourself so insignificant. The entire kingdom owes you its thanks, myself included, of course. We are so grateful for House Wolford's aid, even though you now serve a different master. We are only doing what any of King Roland's loyal vassals would. Ah, oh, speaking of the king, I'm afraid we've a bit of a problem. His majesty seems to be entertaining thoughts of retaliating against Esfrost. But the people have had their fill of war. And I'm sure you're already aware the people look upon the royal line with disfavor. <sighs> I only beg you take every care going forward. A warning. Even so, there is naught we can do but focus on rebuilding. Indeed. Let us return to the king and apprise him of our progress. I would walk the city with Sheila a bit longer and speak with the people. As you wish. But this is not the capital you knew. Be careful, my love. All right, lads and lasses, lay down your arms. Let your bruises remind you of the lessons learned today. Ah, 
Ah, what fortuitous timing. I still... Apologies, last, but I've got places to be. Perhaps another time. He seemed troubled by something. Perhaps I'm overthinking it. Let us end our day's work here. It is early, is it not? Is something amiss? No, nothing at all. Just my attention is required elsewhere for a time. Elsewhere? Curious. How many have you had? <laughs> Not enough. Just one for you, I take it. Yes. Went by in a flash. Can you believe it's been 30 years? The time has escaped us. The memory of that day, however, I doubt ever will. <clears throat> Thrice damned, can't move. Always thought I'd meet my end with a beautiful lass by my side you have many days ahead of you yet Eridor we will see you returned home don't try to run you curs leave me be I'll just slow you down it was my cursed pride that got us into this <laughs> only I should suffer for it we don't all need to die today run even in the face of death, you refuse to set aside your foolish pride. I followed you into this hell of my own will, and I will see you delivered from it. <clears throat> you fool! Charge! Come, come and die! That would have been it for us, had Lord Simon not met their charge in time. Aye, and the only punishment for my pride were these aches that keep me awake at night. We hungered for glory all those years ago, without a care for how it would serve us later on. A couple of would-be heroes, who couldn't be convinced they weren't invincible. Yet here we are, drinking, to celebrate the end of that war. I do not wish to reminisce upon the past. A toast that I may never again repeat the mistakes of my youth. Ah, but before that... Yeah? You have served House Wolfwort well, Eridor. That said, I have a feeling we'll need your sturdy shield even more going forward. You need me to lead a charge? I'm your man. I'll leave anything fancier than that to you. For House Wolfort! For House Wolfort. Roland, what are you doing out here? There's hardly a better place to become lost in one's thoughts, don't you agree? I suppose. However, if aught weighs on your mind, it may serve you better to turn to a friend. Then let me ask, do you believe me too immature for my station? Not at all. Quite the opposite, in fact. But the other nobles love to gossip of my disinterest in politics and intrigue. 
and mocked my love of hawking. You said it yourself. Gossip and sniping, nothing more. Pay no mind to nobles and their petty judgments. The people who matter, your subjects, hold you dearly in their hearts. Stories abound of their love for you. Hey, go peddle your junk somewhere else. And why would I do that, my good sir? I see no reason to forego such a bustling avenue simply to please a stranger. A stranger? You're posted in front of my damn shop. You're stealing my customers from right under my nose. Oh, I am? I'm not sure your lack of customers could be blamed on me. Surely the proprietor bears some responsibility for... What bickering is this? None of your business, Whelp. Now leave us to our negotiations. Prince Roland? Is that really you? A prince, you say? Well, I... A distinguished gentleman such as yourself must be mortified to have your customers bear witness to this childish bickering. Ah, uh, I'm sorry, your highness. My temper got the best of me. And you, merchant. If you mean to trade in Glenbrook, I trust you have procured the proper licenses and approvals. I... well, the process takes some days, you see. Pardon, your highness. Then your business shall have to wait some days, it seems. Shall I summon a member of the Kingsguard to explain the law in detail? N no there'll be no need of that, highness. I'll just be on my way. Thank you, Prince Roland. Come visit any time, and I'll let you have your pick of my wares. <sighs> your place has always been with your people. You could walk down the main avenue and settle disputes with a single word. <laughs> Don't tell me you were watching. They were petty arguments, nothing more. As petty as they might have been, you were happy to do it. What better proof of royalty is there than that? But it wasn't because I was wise that I solved their problems. It was my name and status that let my words wait. Hmm. How do you imagine a kingdom with not a single dissatisfied soul would look? Hmm. That's a difficult thing to imagine. Indeed. I suppose the best one can hope for is to do what we can. While we can. Well, we can start envisioning such a nation. That one day we might build it. Together. I like the sound of that. No doubt the answers we seek lie ahead, so long as we stay honest with ourselves. And so long as we work together, you and I, Sarah Noah. moment, Sheila? Oh, Frederica. Is something the matter? Well, I invited Sarah Noah to have dinner with me tonight. That's wonderful. Are you cooking for him? I am. I've been practicing with the book you gave me. I was hoping to finally show him what I've learned. Then allow me to help. What are you making? A warm soup full of meatballs. A hearty, meaty, savory stew to tickle the tongue and sate the stomach. Or so the book describes it. 
That sounds like quite a mouthful, in more ways than one. The author is rather verbose, yes. Anyhow, I also want to make an appetizer. Might you be able to lend a hand? Cooking is hardly my specialty, but say no more. I'd love to. Oh dear. This is disappointing, to say the least. And we're almost out of time. Sarah Noah will be back any minute now. Excuse me, Lady Frederica. Lord Saranoa has just sent word that he has been held up at a meeting. He says there is a chance he may not even return tonight. I see. Thank you for letting me know. It sounds like your dinner may get postponed. A blessing in disguise. It gives us time to cook this again and do it right this time. Lord Saranoa may not even return tonight. But there is a chance he might. And I refuse to disappoint him. Would you help me, Gila? Of course, Frederica. I shall do my very best to see this through with you. I cannot thank you enough. The vegetables are done, though they are a far cry from perfect. The meatballs are ready too. Now all we have to do is stew them. Frederica, I'm back. Oh, welcome. It appears we've run out of time. I was on my way here when something urgent came to my attention. I apologize for returning so late. I know we were supposed to have dinner tonight. I am just happy you're here. Besides, I am the one who should apologize. I wanted to cook you a meal, but failed terribly on my first attempt. So it... I'm sorry, Saranoa. Don't look so down, Frederica. I was delighted when you asked me to share a meal. Now that I'm back, why don't I help you with the food? Saranoa. Thank you again for inviting me. I'm overjoyed we could spend this time together. As am I. I enjoyed cooking with you as well. The time we spend together is very precious to me. I regret that my duties have been keeping us apart lately. But when I noticed the sky was even more beautiful than ever this night, I hurried home, hoping we could gaze upon its beauty together. It's strange. When I was in Esfrost, I would look up at the same sky. Frederica, promise me that you will always stay by my side. I need you, now more than ever. Of course, Saranoa. I wish to gaze up at the same sky, sit beneath the same moon, and walk the same path you do. Together. Forever and always. Under this tree. This here's the land of the Jacks clan. Or used to be more like. That clasp on your chest, that's their sigil, if I'm not mistaken. It's a memento from my parents. Or so I was told. Aye, now that I'm looking for it, I can see the resemblance. Same silvery hair and everything. Villages near here met with a pretty terrible fate. 
They begged the armies to spare their fields. The only one who listened was one of House Wolfort's bannermen. No one was surprised, big war hero that he was. But by the time we got here, the Jacks had been all but exterminated. He was digging graves for the dead, enemy and all. A hero and a gentleman he was. Names on the tip of my tongue. Benedict. Aye, that was it. Do you know the man? I'd like you to pass on my gratitude. If you do. Thanks for showing me the way. Your coin's all the thanks I require. If that's all you'll be needing me for, I'll leave you to it. You make a poor stalker. Ain't exactly what I'm built for. You fought in the battle here, didn't you? Benedict swore me to secrecy, but suppose it ain't break an oath if you already know. Oh, but first I ought to tell you. That's why he never tried to stop you from finding out about your parents. We drove the enemy up the clifftop, cornered him there. The same instant we cut their leader down, a babe cried out in the distance. In the hideout, we found you, all swaddled up. A letter pinned to you with that same clasp on your chest. Live strong, Anna. Stronger than any. I see now. Your family died at our hands. If it's vengeance you want, you can take it out on me. That doesn't sound like the Eridor I know. Do you think so little of me? To assume I would forsake my friend, bloody my hands with revenge. Is it, Anna? Or are you forcing it to be? Don't be a fool. Benedict is the one who raised me. If I ever want for a father, I know where to find him. I shall make sure he understands that. Made it in time, my lord. Eridor, you Lady Destra. Your mother was loved by one and all, my lord. Honoring her this day is the least we can do. Is it just you here, my lord? <laughs> Spoken like a true leader. Me and your mother may not have been family by blood, but duty bound us. Just... I am sure she would have been overjoyed to see you by my side. I never had a chance to know her. My only memories are from stories others told me. And still... I somehow can feel the warmth of her embrace, hear the loving sound of her voice. She was smitten, that is true. She held on to you so tightly, I reckon not even the Dawn Spear could have pried you from her. <laughs> Did she? Lady Destra's smile was brighter than the sun, and near as constant. She treated young Benedict and I like little brothers, though at times, we weren't so deserving of her care. Even so, she always had a kind word and worry enough to spare. I did not know the bond between you three ran so deep. Benedict never mentioned it. His lips aren't as loose as mine, especially when it comes to Lady Destra. Speaking of which, here. Your mother would have loved to get one of these from you. A snowbell? My father mentioned her fondness for these flowers. Every year when I visited her, without fail, one of these would be placed in front of her grave. Was that you, Alden? They're quite rare, are they not? I often search for them, but I have yet to see one in bloom. Where did you find it? 
Apologies for my absence, my lord. There is not to apologize for. It was a thoughtful gesture, and I thank you for it. Somehow, I can feel Mother smiling down upon us. <laughs> More than I deserve, if I'm being honest. Should have known. Nothing will stop him from his duty. Hmm? Uh, it was nothing, my lord. Indeed. We are fortunate to be part of such a close-knit house. And that is thanks to those who serve it. I trust I'll see you here again in a year's time, Arador. Of course, my lord. Snowbells might capture a moment in time. But your mother inspired loyalty for an eternity. At it again, eh? You know, even the Dawn Spear set down his weapon on occasion. We are at war. I cannot hope to end it by being idle. We were not serious enough. Where is the king we were meant to protect now? What will become of his kingdom? <sighs> king Regna and Crown Prince Franny are no more. Only Roland and Cordelia remain. When I think of how lonely my charge must feel, I almost feel smothered by the guilt. If he's lonely, he hides it well. Could be that losing his princely obligations has lifted a weight off his shoulders. And who are you to speak on his feelings? His father ever doted on Franny. He knew precious few moments of his mother's love before she passed. Even so, he tried his utmost to never show weakness in front of his sister. He was there. There was never a place near the throne for him. Truth be told, Sir Maxwell was more of a father to him than anyone. I'd like to think I have been more than his guard. Oftentimes, I felt like his... confidant. You and Flugi are constant companions. As I said before, my prince, he is more than my companion. He is the truest friend I could ask for. A true friend? I must admit. My prince, I did not mean to... Tis nothing to apologize for. I simply find the idea of soaring the skies with a true friend to be somewhat... You could do the same with the proper training. If it pleases you, my prince, I would gladly teach you. You would? Then I gladly accept. I trust you will go easy on me. I can promise no such thing. You must become as ferocious as a hawk yourself if you wish to ride one. War broke out soon after that. My promise to teach him is yet unfulfilled. So I will train. I will fight. Until the skies are no longer clouded by the fires of war. Only then can I rest. Perhaps then, with the wind in our faces, we can forget our stations, our titles. If only just for one moment. Uh, what was that last part? You'll have to speak up. Nothing. Nothing at all. Yes, it's back to training for me. It's become late. We best keep an eye out for bandits. You have a warrior's intuition. You needn't worry. I won't let us come to harm. 
It takes no great intuition to see that this world is falling ever deeper into chaos. Will we see our way safely through this darkness? I cannot say. We have naught but our duty, and mine is to Prince Roland, whatever might become of House Wolfort. I find your perspective refreshing. Although it may be direct, you walk the path you've chosen with confidence. On the other hand, I often feel that I'm fumbling. I had thought Gustadov to be a man of reason, but now I see that he will not hesitate to employ deceit to achieve his goals. In a manner of speaking, he and I are not so different. I, too, once hoped to have the influence to change the nation. At least, I told myself so. Really, all I wanted was to be free. And Frederica was simply... As long as I had what I wanted, I had no great concern for what became of her. Gila, I... But this war has caused me to reconsider that. I realize that Frederica herself is worth caring for. She's not the sheltered princess I took her to be. Her wits are a match even for Benedict. She surprised me and shamed me. I was wrong to underestimate her, to define her by her birth and station. She represents my greatest failures as a teacher, but also my greatest success. For she has truly taken my lessons to heart. I see now there is no shame in serving another, and no shame in sacrificing my freedom for something greater. Oh, but perhaps I've shared over much. For some reason, I find it easy to talk with you. The feeling is mutual. You are not so aloof as I thought. I just had a thought. When the war is behind us, I may very well open my own school. Of course, you would be welcome to join me. I would be master of the classroom, and you could be master of the training yard. We could teach our students the art of hawksmanship. Our riders would be first class. Ah, what should our school be named? You will come and teach with me, won't you? Not half so aloof as I thought. <sighs> Never saw myself coming this far just to be scrubbing the decks on some ship. Quiet. This is an important job, even if you think it beneath you. I... I meant no disrespect. It's just that my brother and I always figured we'd be passengers on a ship like this. I see. Was he fond of ships? Not as such, no. What's that? It's my brother. Or rather, his ashes, anyhow. Oh. Made a promise to him when we were still small, you see. When he got better, I told him we'd set off to wherever we wanted, eat whatever we wanted, see things nobody'd seen. He always dreamt we'd find a paradise of our own and live like kings. But he never so much as left a sickbed. 
let alone the duchy itself. I'm a terrible brother. Broke my word. As soon as I saw this ship, it all came flooding back. You needn't punish yourself. You did all you could to protect him. Thank you. I appreciate the kind words, but what's done is done. I refuse to accept that. Nothing is ever final. And I dare say, the weather is fair enough for a short test cruise. We can just take the ship out for a joyride? Don't we need his lordship's permission? I am my own person and responsible for my own actions, and the consequences of those actions. Besides, I must ensure that the ship is in working order. And you deserve a reward for your labor today. I am certain we can handle ourselves if we work together. Don't need to tell me twice. You never got to go outside, you know, on account of the sickness. You just lay there, staring at the ceiling. But now he can finally see the bright blue sky and feel the winds uncaged. If only one of his dreams is fulfilled, I'm glad it's this one. Thank you, Anna. This has turned into a fine way to honor his memory. He's free now. There is no need for thanks. This is my job. I. Uh, so you say, that don't mean I can't be grateful. Go on, have another glass. I'm offering top shelf drink for bottom shelf prices tonight. No need to fret over your coin purses. See? This is why we keep coming back. Nobody treats us better than our Hasabar. Quite the crowd tonight, eh? Good to see it. All thanks to you for supplying me with that mead. Thanks to my good fortune, you mean. I got it for so cheap on account of the batch not measuring quite up to the brewer's usual standards. Still, look at how happy it's made them. There's nothing I love more than seeing my tavern full to bursting like this. Thank you, Arador. Truly. It's... it's nothing, honest. Ah! And just like that, they've nearly drank me dry. Might have to close up early tonight. Celebrating something, Asabara. <laughs> Whatever it is, we'll drink to that. Pour us around. I wish I could. Seems the barrels have run dry tonight. But if you'll come back on the morrow... Run dry? You've enough for these drunkards? You can't spare a drop for those of us who are risking our lives for you on the battlefield? Ah! Oh. Hey! Who are you calling a drunkard? Don't you fools go spoiling the one spot of happiness we've had in a long while. Enough! My tavern's a place for forgetting troubles, not stirring them up. You do well not to look down your noses at the very people you've sworn an oath to protect. You want respect? Go out there and earn it by ending the war. Then there'll be drink a plenty to go around. You tell them, Hasabara. 
They're no better than us! You lot aren't blameless either, you know. These soldiers do put their lives on the line to protect yours. They get enough grief on the battlefield without you giving it to them off it. I'm sorry. I don't know what came over me. No, I, I, I shouldn't have let my temper flare. Look, there's still some drink left here. How's about you raise a glass together? Yeah, you can have some of ours, too. Well, don't mind if I do. Level head you've got on your shoulders there, Hasabara. It helped that you pitched in when you did. Ah, now that hits the spot. <laughs> doesn't it? Here, I'll pour you another. See? Now this is what I live for. Giving people a place they can come together and leave the worries of the world behind for a while. Somehow, I know this is what Theo would have wanted me to do. If only I could raise a glass with him. Aye, I reckon he'd be proud. You've made a spot of sunshine for people who don't get much of it these days. People like me. What with business booming again, it looks like I'm going to have my hands full for a while. Don't you worry for your mama, Theo. As long as there's ale to be poured and smiles on her customers' faces, she'll be just... Just what was in that swill you sold me? Ah, my good sir. Don't you look to be in a fit of pique? But what does it have to do with Lionel? Don't play coy with me! That was no secret elixir you sold me. An elderly nobleman bought the entire batch, and all he got for his troubles was a whole day atop his chamber pot! Ah, perhaps the tonic's invigorating effects were too potent for a man of such venerable age. While Lionel is sure his digestive system has been duly cleansed, methinks a smaller dosage should suffice next time. Digestive system? Dosage? You said that medicine granted eternal life! Lionel recalls saying nothing of the sort. We did converse about rumors of such an elixir existing prior to the transaction, but that was all. If you harbor any doubts, pray consult the bill of sale. Rest assured that any misunderstanding stems from your own negligence. For all the good it'll do me now, I might as well wipe my ass with it. My friend, a merchant's seal is his word. Consider this a lesson to read the fine print more carefully in the future. You two-faced charlatan! You'll pay for this! Two-faced? Has your own coin purse not grown mysteriously fat, despite the heavy taxes on salt? I dare say more so than market prices would conceivably allow. One wonders, what is the punishment in Hyzant for those who do business outside the purview of the state? You... You can't threaten me! I'll gut you like a fish! Oh. 
Seems you needed protection after all. S -s -s Shut up! Lionel had the matter well under control. Uh, uh, did you kill him? He's just unconscious. Killing him would only attract unwanted attention. Nevertheless, he gave Lionel quite a fright. That knock on his head couldn't have been good for the fool's health. The only fool here is you. Using the name of House Wolfort to swindle others? How long did you think this charade would last? I'll give you one chance to stop, or else you'll end up next to him in the dirt. Hm. Lionel will have you know he has friends in high places. Yes, very high places. So high in fact that yes, Lionel now sees the error of his ways. His thinking so far has been uh, positively unambitious. It is Lionel who holds the purse strings of House Walfort, and it is he who must see to it that said purse is overflowing with riches. He has been a fool. Only a fool would squander his talents with such petty deceits. But Lionel does not lose heart easily. No, he shall redouble his efforts. For such is his burden, the burden of a loyal servant tasked with guiding his house to boundless fortune. Ha <laughs> ha! Let us begin our new work post haste. That took a turn for the unexpected. What am I supposed to do with him? Knock him senseless and drag him back to the castle? It may come to that. Did you bring me all the way out here? Was something unclear in my explanation? Well, truth be told, I was clutching to the hawk for dear life. I could not make out a single word of what you said. Well, then perhaps it's best to simply show you. What? Who? Oh, it can't be. Izana, my love. I'm overjoyed to see you unharmed. You're... alive! Where have you been? I looked for you. I looked. I caused you worry, and for that I am truly sorry. I went to meet you, but on the way realized that you were being followed by Hyzant's watchdogs. I threw myself at them to serve as a distraction. You managed to escape, I see, so my efforts were not in vain. You fool! You should not have worried about me! What did they... Uh... What's wrong? Are you wounded? <sighs> the goddess of salt has scant mercy for those who have renounced her. The marks her scorn left remind me of their presence on cold nights like this. The night I escaped, I fled to my home. However, I returned to naught but ashes. So I fled further deep into the mountains. 
There I found refuge with a kindly old woman, where I've lived ever since. Until now, that is. You asked me for my assistance, and I am as good as my word. I hope my efforts did not disappoint. I expect you two have much to talk about. I shan't disturb you any longer. Mistress Huet here explained to me how you've come to be in their service. I would give anything to aid you in your fight, but... Say no more. Do not worry, my love. Leave everything to me. I shall bring this war to an end, so that no more innocent sacrifices are made upon the altar of faith. But for now, let me spend this night by your side. Lord Serenoa, may I speak with you? About that noblewoman, yes? Eridor's told me what happened. Forgive me. I know that I should have waited for your orders before acting. But I could not leave that woman to her devices. The longer the war goes on, the more the people suffer. I imagine their feelings toward their rulers must be souring. In spite of this, that woman tried to use your name to wrest their food away. Had we let her go free, people would have thought she was acting on your orders, and their mistrust of you would have only grown. I believed we had to show them that soldiers stand for justice and acted. I accept whatever punishment you deem fit. There will be no punishment, for you have committed no wrong. My lord. Anna looked into her. It seems that woman's ill repute dates back to her days in Glenbrook. Likely, she thought to obfuscate her misdeeds in the Crown City by hiding within my troops. But she wasn't able to conceal her true self in the end. I suppose she thought to earn my favor with the stolen food. Unfortunately for her, she misjudged my principles. Lord Serenoa. Forgive me for my oversight in this matter. I shall take all necessary precautions to ensure nothing like it happens again. So, you aren't upset with me for throwing a noble woman in jail? Had I been in your position, I would have done the very same. For her misdeeds in Glenbrook and the crime you caught her committing, I shall order her banished at once. She will never again be welcome in the Wolfort Domain. Let it serve as a deterrent to any others who would prey upon the common people. It is rare that I meet someone so committed to holding those of high birth accountable for their actions. I hope you will continue to do so. House Wolfort must be a house the people can trust. Of course, my lord. You have my word. I knew I made the right choice. Unlike Patriot, Lord Serenoa is a man worth serving. Yes, I finally found where I am meant to be. But I cannot rest on my laurels. Yes, I must serve my new lord as best I can.
This place was host to a battle not long ago, wasn't it? We have come here to help. Let us offer what relief we can. I never imagined the war would spiral this out of hand. Before the fighting started, all I cared about was becoming the realm's greatest blacksmith. I dreamed of forging the perfect weapon, a testament to strength. But what is strength, truly? Of late, I have pondered much on that question. And have you arrived at an answer? Well... There they are! Thanks for the sweets you gave us! Hey, let's play a game! Very well. What shall we play? Apologies, Ienz. You may return. You needn't wait for me. Come on! Over here! I believe I may have found my answer, Lord Saranoa. Courage. Kindness. Warmth that kindles a smile upon a child's face. The fortitude to keep fighting, no matter what trials you may face. Through it all, your heart remains unbent and unbroken. That is what will end this war. You, my lord and the unmatched weapons you carry within you. Hey! You should play with us, too! <laughs> if you insist, here I come! Right mind sends an old man on a scouting mission. Oh, goddess, take me. I can't wait to retire. Of course, I can't very well do so until the war is over. What will you do once it is? I can't say I have any plans in particular. But there is one regret I'd like to remedy. I'd like to find my first love. I still dream of her. Even all these years later. Huh. She was the general of the Esfrosty forces during the siege of the Citadel of the Sands. The turning point of the Salt Iron War, that was. I never learned her name. We were enemies, yes, but it was clear from the battle we waged how much we admired one another. She caught a beautiful figure on the battlefield. Her every movement was majestic. More than anything, she was a fearsome warrior. Truly, there is none in the world like her. I wonder what might have been had we met him. I see. I hope you can find her then. As do I. As do I. Well, looky here. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get them before they wise up. There. <laughs> he saw us? Well, we're too far away. Ain't humanly possible. M -m monster How did you sense those bandits from such a distance? 
cats like that will never get the better of me. Until this war is over, I've only begun to fight. I can see you mean that. Ah, that's it. I know what I'm going to do when we're done fighting. I'll travel the land till I find the S. Frosty General who caught my eye. It's strange, but I sense her presence wherever I go. Might be she's closer than I think. If that's the case, I'd better do what I can to end this war, and fast. Time to work twice as hard for an early retirement. <laughs> The hour has grown quite late. That was my first scouting excursion in many moons. I'd forgotten how long they can take. Tis not often I get the chance to soar over distant lands such as these. <coughs> Sir Flanagan, over there! If it's coin you want, it's yours, all of it! Please, just spare our lives. I will be taking the coin. But I'm afraid nobody would see me. But please, but please have mercy. I shall be your shield, my love. Run while you can. They need us, quickly. I'm with you. Let them go! What's this now? Did someone call in the army? Wait... I'd recognize that grubby... You're but a lowly coward would turn tail from the duchy. But I bet your shield would fetch good coin at auction. And you shall have it. On the condition you do not lay a finger on these two. Or better yet, I'll take your shield, your money, and your lives. Kill the lot of them! Thank you, good sir. Thank you. We are forever in your debt. I was only doing my duty. Are you hurt? No. The three of us couldn't be better, sir. All thanks to you. Three? She's with child, my lord. Then I am relieved thrice over. Pray, tell us your name. I would name the child after you, should it be a boy. This is hardly a deed worthy of... The man before you was Flanagan, an honorable soldier. Perhaps too much so for his own good. Flanagan. A fine name indeed. We thank you from the bottom of our hearts, Sir Flanagan. You truly are the People's Shield. The People's Shield? I dare say it's a fitting epithet. Ah. <sighs> I am hardly worthy of such a lofty title. <sighs> if only that were your choice to make. You didn't start calling yourself the Bloody Shield after all. Am I wrong, Sir Flanagan? Or should I say, the People's Shield? 
<laughs> then I suppose I must endeavor to live up to it. For my sake, and for that of the one who may bear my name. I'll never come close to carrying on. Maybe I was never destined to be a great mage after all. Oh no, the poor child's fallen. Hey there, are you hurt? Ow, oh, it hurts so bad I can't even stand. Not to worry, I'll fix you right up. So dry those tears. Really? Yep. The pain will disappear like magic. You'll see. Wow. It doesn't hurt anymore. Thank you, sir. Grandma, look! My leg's all better now! Well, I'll be. Thank you so much for healing my grandson. You don't need to thank me. This is nothing. Uh, th those robes... You wouldn't happen to be a student of the Archmage Grandante, would you? You know my grandfather? Oh! Of course I do! What a great man he was. Always using his magic to help those in need, much like you. I was just one of many whose lives he saved. Why, I lost my house to the fires of war and nearly my life along with it. But he quenched the flames with his spellcraft and healed my burns. Had it not been for the Archmage Grandante, I would not be here today. Even though Grandfather's name was erased from Hyzant's records, his memory lives on in the people he helped. It sounds like he was a truly amazing man indeed. And I know he would be proud of you for following in his footsteps. <laughs> do you really think so? I do. And I have no doubt that one day you will restore the glory to your grandfather's name. No matter what the Ministry does to erase his existence, his spirit lives on through you. Right. But I must keep practicing, that I might help even more people with my spells. Just watch me, Grandfather. I'll restore the honor of your name if it's the last thing I do. However, will we carry on? Where's our house, Mama? Did the fire eat it? They're just like me. Picoletta. They lost everything. They're sad and hurting and don't know what to do. Sitting there all alone, I thought I'd never smile again. But that's when you and the others found me. You told me I threw my ball so well. Hearing that made me so happy. I felt warm inside again. I realized I wasn't alone in the world. And now it's my turn to do the same. Wow! Look, Mama! She's amazing! What are you doing, miss? I'm juggling! It's incredible! 
I wish I could do that too. Meet. Pick a letter is just like a troop leader. She brought that child can be a ray of light, warming the hearts of those bereft of hope. There are more who accepted Esfrost's rule than I imagined. Glenbrook's history is long. Yet, that is why hierarchy and precedent hold sway. This is a stubborn land, my lady, not given to easy change. Though Archduke Gustadolf, acting in the name of freedom, granted privilege after privilege to the powerful, For people used to Glenbrook's rigid customs, I suppose that sort of change must have been too seductive to resist. Perhaps, but his freedom was not but greed and cruelty. Lady Frederica, I've been searching everywhere for you. A Wolfort messenger. Did you run all this way? What's happened? My lady, I hail from Castle Wolfort. Bearing tidings of Lord Simon. Has he awakened? He has. He is in high spirits and recovering well. And he is most pleased to hear of the capital's recapture. He bids you visit Castle Wolfort so he can honor you himself. Oh, I must bring these glad tidings to Saranoa at once. How long it has been since I've seen him smile. There is one more bit of news I have for you, my lady, but it is not so happy. Is there some sort of trouble in the Wolfort domain? Bandits are laying waste to the Rosellen village. To our shame, Castle Wolfort does not have enough soldiers to stop this. We would beg Lord Saranoa's wisdom in this matter. The enemy must be powerful indeed. We cannot leave the Rosellen village defenseless. Let us inform the others. Messenger, with us. Well, well. Thank you. I fear the heels in this region are otherwise occupied today. You have my apologies. I have two one, one of our own. And an S Frosty. The cause. Treating the enemy first. Have you lost your mind? His wound. We may have no fealty to his nation, but we have a duty to him as a man whose life depends on us. Leave your. So long as I practice the healing arts, it is my duty to save them both. I am sorry for what I said earlier. I was not myself. All is forgiven. At one time, I would not have challenged you. You can. Simply...